Hi, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a good time. As for me, I'm like mentally, I'm in a great place. Got no problems or bored. Um, but physically, not so great. I've had yet again a rough couple of days, so um, I've been taking it slow. And okay, so I don't want to talk about it in great detail because I don't want to jinx it, but. I have come across a fantastic professional opportunity. Um, I have jumped on it, half believing that I would even be considered. And I have been selected for an exam, which happens in less than a week from now, when these images are being recorded. I'm in a state of shock, excitement, doubt, self-doubt, excitement again. Um, sometimes I feel incredibly sure of myself, sometimes I feel utter despair, but overall I'm great. I mean, I'm, I'm a wreck, but I'm great. So I was just getting ready to put today's project in the washing machine for a final wash to remove all the fabric marker, but I thought I'd give you a small glimpse of it before. Today's project is pretty much a copy and paste of my cutter score dress, if you want to go follow that video tutorial. So yeah, it's pretty much a copy and paste of this project, um, minus the bottom. It's actually an Edwardian shirt waist. I shouldn't use air quotes because it is, the pattern is Edwardian, it's just the techniques are... But it is Edwardian, it is an Edwardian pattern. I just did my cottage core dress in a white cotton voile with a bit of eyelet and with an actual piece of Victorian lace. So that little bit here came as a gift. And I literally just finished that garment this morning. I was getting to washing this and filming a reveal uh, before the end of the day. So in the meantime, let's get to the tutorial. The first thing I gotta do is take care of the front pieces so that they end up looking like this. This front panel is made of a large piece that is gathered down and sandwiched in between the two yoke pieces. On all three pieces, I need to mark down and fold the center front plaquettes for the buttons and buttonholes. These all need to be pressed in place. You can sew them with temporary basting stitches if you want. This will make handling it way easier in my opinion. I'm pinning the bottom front piece to one of the yokes right sides facing each other in order to sew them together at the center front and at the side only. This leaves me with a large amount of fabric between the sides and the front which I need to gather down to fit with the rest of the yoke using two parallel lines of running stitches. I'm taking my time to ease the pleats and pin them so that they look visually coherent along that remaining seam line, which I'm then sewing by hand using one back stitch per pleat before I go over that same seam with the machine. Opposite that yoke, I'm pinning and sewing the second yoke along the same seam line, the right side of the yoke facing the other layers. I'm trimming the excess seam allowance and bringing the yoke pieces together, essentially sandwiching all the allowances inside. For extra durability, I'm top stitching this seam line on the yoke. I'm not putting a lot of care in this top stitching because it'll be covered by a piece of this antique Victorian lace, which I'm delicately sewing in by hand. Okay, so here's the shirt waist so far on the dress forum. I have to say, it looks good, but I do have my work cut out for me, because um, there are a lot of adjustments to make. The front piece works 100%. Um, I know that I needed no modifications the last time I did it with the cottage core dress. It's gonna need to be trimmed here and stitched to a waistband, but that's for later. But I don't have a clue about what's going on with the back piece. It doesn't work and I don't know what I did the last time to make it work. 
All I know is that I'm gonna need to make a few modifications to my pattern. I need to bridge that gap here. It's about an inch and a quarter wide. Of course, I have no more fabric, so I cannot cut another piece. So I'm gonna make a few bands like this. I'm probably gonna make a double layer just so that all the raw edges will be hidden. Uh, apart from that, I'm gonna need to make a couple of darts around the neck. I have no problem doing this because I know that I've done it before. I, there are darts at the back of my uh, cottagecore dress as well. And I've already laid in the pleat here, so it's okay. It's at the right height, everything works. And finally, like I know that this bit here is too wide. It, it should be like, that's the side here. My side seam is, let me show it to you, is on this side here. And I think I remember that last time I did this pattern with a cottagecore dress, um, I had the same problem and, and I think I remember I had trimmed that bit uh, but then again I forgot to mark it on my pattern so I traced it here with this fabric marker this dissolves with water before I attach a shoulder I'm gonna take everything off the dress form and transfer my new markings to the pattern just to make sure that I uh, don't forget about them uh, also add an extension I'm gonna extend the back piece by an inch and a quarter Oh, let's not forget to mark the darts as well. Um, what should I do? You know what? I think I'm gonna mark one dart and then when I'm sure I got the right shape, I'm gonna transfer the exact same dart on the other side. I want a symmetrical garment. Once I had everything written down to avoid making the same mistake thrice, I could resume constructing the bodice. The shoulders were attached using these little strips of fabric I made earlier. I'm attaching the first band to the back panel, right sides facing each other. I'm then attaching that same band to the corresponding front panel, right sides facing each other again. My second shoulder band has had its long edges pressed inwards, so I can just sew it to the wrong side of the fabric to hide all the shoulder's raw edges. I can then move on to the side seams, which I did using a French seam. If you don't know what a French seam is, you can check out the description box for a link to an explanation. Hey, hello again. So it's been a while since my last filming session and that's where we're at right now. I'm done with the shoulder seams and I've attached the side seams as well. And one sleeve has been put in. Now, today, my plan is to put in the other sleeve. I doubt that I'll be able to do much more than that today because it's been a rough couple days physically. So if I get to be done with the sleeve today, I'll probably start working on the collar. I have a collar and then a waistband to do. All right, let's get back to work. Consistently with the side seams, I did my sleeve with a French seam. Fitting a sleeve to a bodice is a thing that a lot of sewists kind of dread, which I used to. Fortunately, sleeves oppose me no struggle anymore, since I've decided to just do them all by hand. I'm sewing all my sleeves in along their marked seam lines with a running stitch, going from the side seam up until a given point near the shoulder. The other side of the arm's eye is given the same treatment until I'm left with a small unsewn bit at the top of the shoulder. Usually, this type of sleeve has a little bit of excess, which I'm gathering down, pinning in place, and stitching there with one tiny backstitch per pleat. I'm then going over the whole seam line again with the tiny hand backstitching, ensuring a very precise and very sturdy arm's eye. To make sure those edges don't fray, I'm going over them with a bit of double folded bias tape, again by hand, with some backstitching. I kept the cuffs very simple. 
I just made a double folded straight grain cuff, pressed down one of its seam allowances and gathered the bottom of the sleeve to fit the edge that hasn't been pressed, right sides facing each other. I folded down that previously pressed edge to hide the raw edges and sewed it around by hand. The waistband was made very similarly to the cuffs, except I added a strip of 1 inch woven tape for durability. I pressed down the seam allowance on its ugly side and basted it with temporary stitches. To figure out where I needed to cut, gather and sew my waistline on the bodice, I pinned it to the dress form and played around with the excess fabric, pinning it until I had a crude but satisfactory shape. I used a bit of tape, some pins and my water-soluble fabric marker to sketch out where the waistline should be. I took the garment off the dress form and laid it out on my table as best as I could. Using my French curve and my marker, I drew up those seam lines to make them symmetrical and then I cut the excess fabric with a half-inch seam allowance. The waistband is set more or less the same way the yoke pieces were. It is pinned and sewed to the bodice at the center fronts and at the sides, pretty sides facing each other, leaving a small excess of fabric at the center back and a larger amount of excess around both front sides. All of these were gathered to fit, sewed in by hand to ensure precision and sewed over by machine for durability. The raw edges were hidden away when I brought that previously pressed edge to the seam line and sewed it there by hand using small whip stitches, which for some reason I've no footage of. If you need to, you can rewatch the cuffs for reference though. I added the buttons and buttonholes, as well as a hook and eye at the waistband and one at the yoke junction. I feel like I should apologize for this, but I've got no footage either for when I set my collar. It's made of three layers, one voile, one eyelet, and one toile for interfacing. I pat stitched the toile layer to the voile and then I sewed this bit to the eyelet layer, right sides facing each other. I pressed the bottom seam allowance inwards on its ugly side and then trimmed the other seam allowances, flipped the collar right side out and gave it a good press. To know how I attached a collar to the neck seams, since there's no footage, you can refer to the waistband and the cuffs if you need. After that, the garment is complete! So, a few final comments about this project. Well, first, I absolutely love it, of course. Um, that's a given. Even when a project is full of mistakes, I usually love it anyway. So, a few last comments about this project. I actually love mixing up the timeline a little. Like today, I'm wearing these baggy boyfriend jeans. Um, and I'm wearing them with the Edwardian shirt waist. This garment in particular, well, okay, I had already used this pattern before during my cottage core dress. Like I was saying, this is the second time around that I'm using this pattern and I really did not remember having had such a hard time with that pattern um, when I did the cottage core dress, especially around the arms eye and around the shoulder area. I really don't mind having that strip there because it does reinforce the shoulder seam. Um, as for the rest of the pattern, I think I'm good. Um, the back looks nice um, and there's enough room for me to move around. And as for the front, well, the waistline is a smidge too high maybe. And that's because there is no skirt right now to weigh that part down. On the cottage core dress, there's a big skirt. It's I think two panels, 54 inches wide each. And so that's a lot of fabric, it weighs the whole thing down. So since there is no skirt on this blouse, it's just a blouse, 
Um, it tends to travel up when I move around. But I really don't mind, I think it's cute. It's like a vintage looking crop top. Like if Anne of Green Gables had a rebel streak or more of a rebel streak. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I think it's cute. There'll definitely be a lot of occasions for me to wear this blouse. The sleeves are a comfortable length. Um, I did a mid-length sleeve. Initially, I wanted to make a full-length sleeve, but it turned out I was too short on cotton for this. There's just a few bits of cabbage left. So really, I did the most I could with what little I had. I really love that small detail here with the vintage lace. These two bits here are literally all all I had of that lace. So this little piece here, which is a little yellower, kind of tends to make us forget that these two bits are not the same color either. So from afar it looks like a completely white garment, which I'm most pleased with. So yeah, that concludes this week's project. So as always, I would like to thank you very, very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this content, please subscribe to this channel. If you think that I should have done something differently or if you're using different techniques, please do tell me all about it because I am not done making shirt waists. Until the next time, have a good rest of the week, have a good weekend, make sure you drink enough water and make sure you're taking care of yourself and taking care of those around you. And I'll see you for the next project. Bye.